Yes. Oh, they're glass windows. Somebody did. Really, really, please. We're starting Sabbath here. Julian, Oscar. We're ending Sabbath. You guys, guys, if you're holding, if you're holding your glasses. Okay, next.
I can please ask everyone to rise for a moment of silent prayer. We will uh, begin our short meeting to close the Sabbath uh, this evening with hymn number nine. So if you can turn with me, hymn number nine. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
to ask if everyone can please kneel for a prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we thank you for bringing us here together to uh, close uh, this Sabbath day. We thank you for the opportunity that we've had to be able to learn of you and praise your name uh, throughout this uh, conference. And we ask that uh, you can continue to help it to be a blessing to each and every one that's in attendance, especially the youth and the young people that are among us. Please forgive our sins. Help us to recognize the sacrifice those made so that we can have an opportunity to turn a life. Please be with those that are less fortunate than we, those in areas of hardship and trial. You know each and every one. All these things we ask and we thank you, Lord, not because um, we are worthy, but through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If uh, you can all please be seated. Uh, so I had an opportunity this morning, uh, Sister uh, Lillian Poznich asked me if I could um, hold Sabbath school for some young people this morning. Um, and when I say young people, I mean kind of pre-teenagers, you know, 10 to 13 type. And uh, I have to say that it was a really great experience for me. Um, I was asking them some questions in regards to if they could close their eyes and wake up 20 years from now, what would make them happy? And uh, I have to tell you that I was very... Um, pleased with the answers that I received from these young children. Um, that really tells me how much they really think about things and how they value things, and especially when we talk about happiness. I think if I was to think back to being 10 years old, I would probably think of waking up surrounded by toys, even though I'm 20 years older, I'm sure that would make me happy, right? But that's not the answers that I received from these young people. It was really amazing, you know, they, they mentioned some things, you know, like career and obviously, you know, having enough money to enjoy things and so on, but ultimately, they came to the same conclusion that true happiness comes through Christ. And I was really, really blessed with, uh, with the opportunity to be able to speak with uh, these children this morning. Um, it says in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Right? And if we can have that type of a character, we can be happy because we put our faith in Christ. Uh, one of the other things that the, these uh, you know, young children uh, said that, you know, what makes them happy and they could see making themselves happy 20 years from now is uh, helping others, right? That makes us happy when we can help others. And, and I was, again, just so impressed with, with these young people uh, saying that. And uh, the reason I really bring that up this morning is uh, we uh, were supposed to have a meeting a bit longer. Obviously, we're starting late. And don't worry, we're not going to uh, take an hour now to, uh, to go through uh, close the Sabbath, but I did want to take an opportunity just to cover two uh, short topics. Uh, one of them is in regards to Kenya. If you guys remember, Brother Adrian was here, uh, was it about a month ago, a few weeks ago? I can't, it feels like yesterday. Yeah, uh, Brother yeah, Andre Devai was here, and uh, he was talking about different projects that are going on around the world. And uh, they had uh, uh, wanted to share just a couple pictures of some of the work that's going on in Kenya, building an orphanage in Kenya. And so if I can ask, oh, here we go, there's a, there's a couple pictures here of uh, the work that's taking place. If you can um, just uh, scroll through those for us. Yes, uh, Brazilian brethren went there and, and have, done, uh, have done some work, but uh, as you can see, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. I think as, uh, you know, as we look at these pictures and we reflect on how privileged we are uh, to live where we do and to have what we have, it should really open our hearts to be able to say, you know, wow, you know, what can we do to help these young people? Um, we had uh, opportunity, and I know we promised a long time ago, we still haven't done it, but uh, you know, we had the opportunity to go to uh, Ethiopia a few months ago and to work on a medical mission. And it was such a blessing uh, for us to take part in something like that and to be able to really go and provide that um, you know, healing to people that really needed it. And uh, we will um, have a special meeting, I promise, uh, where Xenia and Binyami will be able to present you know, what we did with what was collected uh, by uh, those in, in this field that uh, gave towards that project. 
Uh, but I want to take an opportunity now just to um, recognize again this project that's going on and ask if anyone is willing to help that, that they can uh, give towards that project. Because again, you know, these children need help and we have so much uh, to give and so much to be thankful for here. And uh, Canada's always been known uh, as a country and as a church that, uh, that provides uh, that assistance uh, throughout the world. Um, we also have a special project uh, that's going to be taking place um, in uh, Ottawa um, in about a month, right? A little over a month, yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to ask uh, Brother Doran just to come up and if he can say just a few words about uh, the project that, that's going to be taking place in Ottawa. So the canvassing project this year, uh, Ottawa 2019, is planned for um, July 28 to August 6. Uh, we have uh, some young people who registered. They would like to uh, come. We have very um, positive experiences from last year here in Toronto. And um, uh, those of you that were hesitant or had some other plans and you can reconsider, uh, you are very welcome to join us uh, in Ottawa. Uh, just to give in a nutshell a, a short description of the project. So we are going to stay about um, half an hour, 40 minutes from Ottawa. Uh, we rented a place where we will stay. Uh, in, uh, it's basically in nature. It's outside the city. So that's, that's, go that's going to be our location for... Uh, where we are going to be dislocated, and then uh, and then every day we will travel to uh, Ottawa uh, for canvassing. So basically, in the morning we will have a couple hours of uh, studies. We, we we have very intriguing topics like good manners, uh, homiletics, um, um, uh, some Bible history, and other topics among those. So which are going to be presented by different brethren from our field that are involved directly in this project. And, um, and then you will have some free time. So the main canvassing will take place in the afternoon. So uh, from Monday to Friday, uh, every afternoon, it's like five days, and then we, uh, um, uh, we will have canvassing in Ottawa. So we target primarily to do canvassing close to the church we rent, where, uh, where our church is uh, gathering at every Sabbath. And, um, and then Sunday, we, we are planning to have a health fair. So the health fair will take place uh, at the church. Some of you have been at the same church. And also, I'd like to make an appeal to all of those brethren from uh, uh, all our churches in the field uh, on behalf of the missionary department. We will need your help. So if some of you can come, that's going to be Sabbath, um, August the 2nd, uh, the, uh, the, the th 3rd, sorry, yes. So if you can come for the Sabbath, that will be great. We will have a larger uh, congregation for the Sabbath. If you can't, and some of you can come just for Sunday, that will be great as well. So uh, I believe the health fair will start around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we'll run for about three hours or so. Um, uh, so uh, basically what will happen, we will canvas during the week, and we will give invitations to the health fair beside other ways of advertisement and inviting people to the health fair. So the health fair will be, we will rotate, so we, we will have about eight stations and we will have different people located at the stations. It's like a new start program, uh, which will uh, end up with a uh, um, uh, cooking, uh, 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 cooking demo. Uh, at the end, and people will be able to sample. It's not going to be a big cooking demo, but it's going to be something at the end that they can sample and uh, uh, to be more of a variety, you know, in the health fair as well. So that's going to be for Sunday. Um, uh, once again, I, I would like to appeal again on, the, on behalf of the missionary department and our field. Uh, we, need, we need a little bit more uh, uh, support, uh, prayers, first of all, and if you feel impressed to contribute uh, with, uh, with some fin financial support, it's really appreciated. This goes towards uh, this project. Uh, we, uh, we don't have many expensive expenses, but still, you know, um, we, we try to do it on, on minimum budget, but, but everything, it's money, you know, to, uh, to keep our young people. And remember one thing, uh, when, when your children come, teenagers, 
this, first of all, it's good for them. These meetings and these gatherings help them grow spiritually and come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And then beside that, uh, we can share the gospel with other people. So we would like to see more. And if there are even some of the youth uh, from the United States or they would like to join us, we accept. And we would be happy to uh, if uh, some more would, uh, would join our team. So uh, we hope to see you there. So it's, uh, we are, we are uh, coming on Sunday, um, July 28, and then uh, it will go throughout the week. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Doran. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to call, if I can, Brother George forward, and he's going to close the Sabbath for us. Brethren, after a long but very beautiful day and full of blessings, I'm not going to keep you long. So just a few, few words, a few verses, and um, just to, to think and to meditate in the next week. So I just want to read <clears throat> from Luke chapter 24, verse 28 and verse 29. So Luke chapter 24, verse 28 and 29. And they do nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into the tarry with, um, to tarry with them. We know these verses, right? It's not something new for us. I just want to underline one word and to, make, and to think to this word next week. The word is or the expression is, they constrained him. What means this word? What means to constrain somebody? To, to ins not just to say, oh, come with me. No, oh, phew. better. To insist, right? To insist. He, he, they constrain him. Abide with us. Abide with us. Now the Sabbath is gone, right? Jesus, maybe goodbye. I'm going to wait for the next week here. What do we have to do? constrain him, to insist, Jesus, please stay with us, stay with us. And what happened after? What happened? In verse 30, it says, and it came to pass, as uh, he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and give it to them. He gave them bread. And what happened after they ate bread? They recognized him. Their eyes were open, Right? So may God help us, brethren. May God help us. And uh, just imagine. Imagine you are going in the, in the sanctuary, in the holy place. What do you have in the right? What do you have in the right? You have bread, right? You have bread. And that is a symbol of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. And we eat every day, right? We should pray every day. We need him every day. And in the left, what is in the left? We have lights, right? The, the candlestick. Uh, how long during the day was the, that light on? It was during only the night, only the day, only the Sabbath? All the, why all the time? Because there in that room, there were no, without windows, right? Nothing. That was the only source of light. In this world is darkness. The only source of light is Christ. And the only source of bread is Christ. So, brethren, may God help us to understand this lesson and to insist when we pray. Constrain him, and he will stay with us. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother George. Uh, so with that, um, I'd like to ask if, uh, if I can uh, have you rise, and we're going to close the Sabbath with hymn number 39.
time, let us kneel for the closing prayer, and I'd like to ask uh, Brother George, if you don't mind offering the prayer. Our Father, which are in heaven, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for everything you have done for us until this moment. Thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for all your blessings. And thank you so much for your sacrifice. Now, um, we ask you to, to stay with us during the, during the next week. Abide with us, with each one of us. Amen. Please stay with us, our Heavenly Father, and protect us and help us to spread the gospel wherever we go. Help us to be a light in our families, in our churches, and everywhere we go. Help us to shine and help us to reflect your light. Please forgive us and help us to see no more. Bless the church. Bless uh, each one of us. You know us better than we know. So please be with us and give us strength and teach us how to, how to be real Christians in this world, not only with, with a name, but in practice. To be real Christians and to, to be as you are, to be like you, every day to be closer and closer. Please um, be with us during the ne next week and next Sabbath help us again to, to be together and to spend a beautiful Sabbath with you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so with this hymn and this prayer, we've concluded the um, service uh, for close of Sabbath. Um, before we leave, I'm going to let Brother Walter make a few announcements. No, very short. Thank you, Brother Joel. Uh, brethren, uh, I'm really very pleased with today's day. I felt the Lord's presence. I trust that you felt it also. Um, did you see these children this afternoon? Aren't they beautiful? I mean, <laughs> children, you really made our day. We really like what you do. May God bless you and help you as you learn more and practice these skills. They're teachers, absolutely. Mothers, fathers, sisters who are helping here. And all of you, brethren. Messages last night, this today, um, young people, choir, uh, orchestra. Wow, that's amazing. Praise the Lord. Enjoying good music, fellowship, and so on. Good food, everything. Um, but what I want to tell you, brethren, uh, think about the messages. Knowing God, communing with God, tomorrow preparing the way for the coming king, right? This is our job here. Please, uh, brother, the Dalibor Hanushka made a good... Um, Observation, I mentioned 11 o'clock sharp to start, but let us come a little bit earlier. Let's come 10.30, 10.40, that we have a song service and that we prepare spiritually for the message that Brother Livio will deliver tomorrow before we close. Also remember, I was reminded after we close the Sabbath, uh, close the conference uh, tomorrow, we have a lunch. And then in the afternoon, we are invited to visit a very nice property up north, just up uh, north of Highway 9 off the airport road, with uh, Tim and Sister Ika's home. A large property, opportunity for recreational activities. Um, we will fellowship, have good food, talk about spiritual things. So please keep that in mind tomorrow afternoon. We will be dismissed. Uh, is there anything else um, to say this time? Yes, please. Would I like to come? Yeah, please. Half of my sermon this afternoon, there is half of it left. <laughs> no, it's just to say thank you for, uh, first of all, inviting us to be here. Thank you so much for the, the spiritual blessings uh, you are able to share with us. We praise the Lord. You know, Canada is the place which you do not refuse when they invite you, you know. And uh, we will come with pleasure the next time. Uh, there, was some, um, uh, th there were some changes in my program, my international travels, so we have to rush back home. Um, we only have um, um, until Tuesday to move to another house. 
before we go on our trip. So it's going to be, this is the reason my wife and my son could not come, so they could use the time to, you know, pack and stuff like that. So please pray for us. We are going to go on a long trip. I'm going to visit different countries for canvassing. And I, we, we are really glad we came. We always have something to learn. Uh, here in Canada, you progress from one day to another. I mean, it, it's, you, you come here and you say, wow, when did this happen? You know, uh, music and everything. And now organizing a, a canvassing program. This is what I wish every field would be like. You know, after the general conference visits and have a, a canvassing project, we would like them to continue doing it without the assistance of the general conference. And, and this is the beauty of it. When I said I could not come, uh, you didn't stop. You kept going. And, and this is what I would like every field to be like. I mean, do it once, and then they keep going. This is wonderful. I, I really appreciate the team that uh, you are having here in the field. I appreciate the support of the membership, and there is nothing but growth when we work, right? There is nothing but blessings. So keep working, keep sacrificing. We don't do it for earthly pleasures. We do it for the Lord, and the recompense is going to come soon enough. So I want to thank you again for inviting us, and any time we are available, we are willing to come. Clara surely enjoys being here. Uh, my wife just wrote to me that she wished she could be here with my son as well. But uh, life is like this, the life of a missionary. Uh, we are kind of used to it already. But please pray for us. Uh, we have a, a great two months to look forward to. It's going to be really busy going to Czech Republic, uh, Romania, uh, Russia, and Tahiti. So uh, there is a, a lot going on. So praise the Lord. And again, thank you so much for the food for the friendship and everything. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Adrian. Have a safe trip. And again, to everybody, have a blessed week. And uh, God willing, we see each other again tomorrow morning. Have a good night. Thank you.